All right, everyone, I'm having a lot of fun today. I'm going to be dressing up a little bit to uh, teach you a Tom Petty song just because that band has a sense of style and I wanted to do it up a little bit. Uh, usually I just wear a t-shirt, so I felt the, uh, the urge to do so. This video is going to be free for everybody on all the different platforms because what I'm doing is celebrating uh, upgrading the website after a long time. And I just had to get it working in the beginning and now I'm really trying to spruce it up. So if you look through it, there's a lot of upgrades. And if you look at the song lesson section, there's these really cool graphics for each song. So today, obviously, I'm going to be teaching you how to play American Girl on guitar, but it's kind of a special way of doing it. Back when I played this in a band, we had two guitar players, which is very helpful because I played Mike Campbell's parts and uh, she played Tom Petty's parts. But when she left the band, I had to suddenly grow my sound to accommodate her being absent. So I found little ways to make myself sound a lot bigger as a single guitar player in a band, uh, and I was able to cover a lot more space with these tips and tricks. So I'm going to teach you that way today. So if you're the single guitar player in a band, you're going to have it made with this song now. You're going to be sounding huge. But you know, if you have the other guitar player in your band, you could just back off and slim down your parts a little bit and you'll be just fine. All right, get ready to be amazed at how fast you can actually learn this tune. We're going to start off with those three hits, and we're going to be doing the mic Campbell part. So we're going to do the open D. We're going to do an octave D, third string, seventh fret. And then with our pinky, we're going to play the first string, tenth fret. That's three Ds. So we have to mute the second string by touching it with our first finger a little bit. Then wrap your thumb over the top and try to mute the sixth and fifth strings if possible. Does that sound huge? Now, if you can't quite mute that A string, it's not the end of the world. It just sounds more heavy metal, you know, but try to do it if you can. And we hit it three times again. And then the band kicks in. There's a strum pattern that I want you to memorize right away, and the rest of the song's gonna seem really simple when it comes to this part. So the pattern's gonna be like this down, up, down, up, up, down. Start with that. Down, up, down, up, up, down. Then the second half is down, up, down, down, up, down, up, and that's it. Once you get in the groove with it, it really flows. Down, up, down, up, up, down, down, up, down, down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up, up, down, down, up, down, down, up, down, up. Add that to the 3D that you have going on, 3Ds. Isn't that great? And it's a huge chunk of the song. So that leads us through the intro to the first verse. When the verse kicks in, Mike Campbell actually does this cool climbing thing. But if you're the single guitar player, I'd rather have you do the full chords down here, just the open versions. A couple things. I play G like this. Mike Campbell's doing this. But either way is fine for this song. Then when I do the A major, I'm just barring my first finger across. I'm not doing this. I'm doing this. There's a reason for it. I'll talk about it a little bit. So really, that's the first part of the verse. Just real sparse open chords. If you watch Tom Petty live, it doesn't look like he plays the high F sharp in the D chord. So you get like a D5, that's just something you could do if you want. Do that twice. Then the second time around, when you get to that A, you're going to hit that. Then you have to hit the A again, but I want you to expand it. This is where we're going to start to do the dueling guitar parts with one guitar. Take your pinky and put it across the first and second strings at the fifth fret. By the way, I know this is a bad guitar to teach with because it has these weird lines in it. Hopefully you can still see what I'm doing. I'll do ultra close-ups for you. Doesn't that A sound huge? It's actually just an A power chord because it's an A5. A and E are the only two notes we're playing. It's kind of incredible. Now, after we hit that A, we have to do a special arpeggiating version. This is what Mike Campbell really does. If you don't want to do that, you want to make it more basic, you could just do the chords. But he walks up from the open A like this. So follow the tab for that. Uh, if you just want to do the chords, it's a D chord. To the G. To the E minor. And then to the A. I love how in this song he uses both E major and E minor. That's really cool. All right, so with the arpeggio, it sounds a lot more authentic, and it doesn't get thin sounding if you keep everything ringing out nicely. <laughs> that 
That's the secret. If you make it choppy, it's going to get small. You want to keep it big, so keep everything ringing out. Now, the next part, we go to that cool A5 shape again, and we hit it a certain way. So I hit the low strings for the first two hits, and then I hit all of them for the last one. <clears throat> Thinking dynamically here. Now we go into the OK All Right part, and you have to walk up again and do some arpeggios. That's kind of new. We're going to hammer on to the B note on the fifth string second fret real quick before we go to the A chord. So let's walk up to the G. Isn't that great? Tying it together almost like a bass line. Now for the A, we're going to do the A5. I want you to get used to this now. It's like a Sweet Home Alabama type trick. So A, hammer down to the B, open D. This time you do want to add the F sharp at the top like that. It might feel a little bit funny to do the hammer on to the open D and then hit the D again. But it's just the way it goes. Sometimes that happens. Now there's a B minor chord for that next part. But Mike Campbell does this really great blues bend. And I used to think it was Chuck Berry, like. But it's actually a single note at the top. But the secret is, is when you bend on the G string, you don't want to lift off. You want to keep both of the notes happening. So. Does that sound huge? If I separate them. It's cool, but you're going to lose that depth of sound. Back to the G. There's that hammer on again. The reason I love that Sweet Home Alabama little hammer on right there is because we, it gives us time to jump up to do the 3D octave thing again. The details are what make this song so much fun after you've already played it for many decades. All right, then you're back to that strum. Then you basically do the verse again, and you're good to go. And then there's going to be a little bit of a breakdown that we have to do. And the way to make this sound more like two people playing is don't just do this part. That's what a lot of people do, but if you want to build up the sound and make it sound bigger, you have to do the muted jamming going on in the background. So... Trust me, if you could already do the 3D octave strum, you should be able to do this. Just mute your strings. Just kind of ride it like that. It's a little more difficult because you have to... You have to get like a funk guitar player on that part. All right, so after you do that, you know, if you can't quite do all that rhythmic stuff, you could leave it out, but slowly try to add in a little bit. So don't just be... Maybe add like a... Just one in there. Adds a lot to it. The last time you do it, you just go up to the A. Guess what? We're back to the 3D part with the strum. We're all the way to the solo, and pretty much that's the end of the song because it fades out after that. The way to do this is to slide up to the D and the F sharp. I used to always slide, I'd be like. But if you watch him, he doesn't really do that. He kind of slides the first time and stays. Which is nice. So it's really just that same pattern. It's low, high, low, high, high. The last one though, we come down to the 14th fret and the 12th fret. So we're gonna be playing the C sharp and the E. Little tip for you, this is gonna save you a lot of headache. Don't go to your ring finger just because it's spread out like that. Stay with your middle and index finger. 
because that's going to allow you to go right back to where you were without having to switch fingers. That's a mistake I made for a long time. So you can just go back to that. Now the part everybody wonders about, it's the pull-off part where you're going to start to use a little bit of hybrid picking. So we're going to bar across the second and third strings at the seventh fret, and we're going to pull off from the tenth fret to the eighth fret on the second string back and forth. But we're going to be plucking with our middle finger, picking the lower note. Just get really used to that. Don't feel like you have to, you know, rock back and forth with your index finger. You could keep it steady if you want. Move it up two frets. It takes a while to get that you know rhythm going so you're smooth. It's kind of bouncy, you know. If you do it too, that's too too uh, herky jerky. Keep it one two one and two and keep it triplety. Move it up to the twelfth fret. So we're gonna change it up now. So we're gonna go. So we're really pulling off from the fifteenth fret to the twelfth, then the fourteenth fret to the twelfth. Move it up two frets and go back to the original shape. So we have that movement going up. It's kind of funny how this whole song just feels like it's constantly uh, cycling around, going up, coming back down. So as we go, one more time. Keep going on with a metronome until you can make that really, I hate to say it, but shreddy. You know how accurate shredders want to be? Then the song's pretty much faded out by them, but what I found really works live is to go to this bend. Do a double stop bend at the 17th frets like that. It just sounds huge. And if you want, you can come down to here and just do all your pentatonic licks right there and you're good. Usually we go back to the chords that were happening before, you know, like that part. So the chords will be D, e, just like the verse. You can end on D and everybody's happy. Okay, even though that was a very short lesson, that was everything you need to play American Girl, mostly as a single guitar player in a band, or I should say the only guitar player in a band. But be sure to mention that you're single if you're playing a show, because then you're going to get a lot of people wanting to talk to you after the show. <laughs> okay, everyone, hopefully that was fun. Check out the new upgrades to the website, and uh, we'll see you soon. Thanks. Bye.